Hello there. Welcome to another episode of One Planet Music. I'm glad you joined in. The The world is crazy right now. <laughs> There's a lot going on. I've been praying a lot for love and justice in the world. Um, I've just been reflecting a lot, and this is definitely a trying time for humanity. And one of the best things we can do is to really keep each other in our prayers Um to act upon those prayers, uh, to reflect a lot about what it is that we can do as individuals, even if it's just a little grain of salt, what can we do to make this world a better place? The world is definitely in some need of healing and music can be a great healer. For me particularly, the drum has always been a great healer. Whenever I get to play a djembe, an African drum, it, it just, I get to release so much particularly when I get to play with other people, like in a sort of drum circle setting. And you might think like, what? Like percussion can't be healing. It's like loud. It's, it's jumpy. It's dancey. It's, um, I, you know, you, you would think that music at, for healing would be like some, some soft piano, some harp playing. But surprisingly enough, percussion is a great healer because it's such a fundamental, it, it, it's one of the most ancient sounds it really gets to our heart. It gets to our roots. So I'm so glad that on today's episode, we have professional percussionist and full-time mom of Julian, Camelia Akami Keys. On my daily, you know, I wake up, I take care of Julian during his nap. I'll go, you know, if I got an hour or two, I'll go work on some stuff. Maybe I can work on stuff, you know, while he's kind of bouncing around in, in the carrier and I'm holding him. But it's it's um it's like instead of you know oh it's eight nine o'clock I'm gonna go watch a movie it's like you know what I'm gonna go work on my craft is constant working on progression and that forward movement. Welcome to the One Planet Music Podcast, where we explore the role of music in an ever changing world. As a listener, you'll gain motivation, inspiration, and practical knowledge from fellow musicians and music professionals who are making an effort to perfect their craft while having meaningful impact. I'm your host, Daniel Rinaldi. Camelia is a killer musician. Her focus is on playing the most bizarre percussion instruments and combining them. So she's not just into playing a drum set, even though she can do that. She's not just into playing the congas, even though she can do that. She'll merge all these different instruments into her own creation, like, like a cook choosing her ingredients to make a masterful dish. And so throughout the episode, you'll hear Camelia dissects different rhythms and how she thinks about rhythms and how she combines them as well, like from her African roots, from Latin roots, from just whatever sounds um, she can put together to create something new. What I really love about our conversation though, as well, is how she gets to talk about being a full-time mom uh, with her son, Julian, who actually joins us in the conversation. Uh, so you'll hear him participating as well. Most of the music you'll hear throughout the episode is actually taken from her Instagram account. There are the short percussion loops, like seven seconds or 10 seconds. And I just repeat them so that we get to enjoy them for a little bit longer. I don't need to say any more. Let's just dive in and get to talk to Camelia Akami Keys. Uh, first off, I would love to just check in actually on the current situation with the pandemic. How are you dealing with it? Uh, I'm I'm actually doing okay. Just uh, spending a lot of t time at home with my son, working on music, writing music. So uh, there hasn't been too much change uh, for me. And it was kind of interesting. I was, I don't watch the news. So I was actually at Target and I noticed, I'm like, Hey, why is there no toilet paper? Why are, like, where's all the paper towels? And I like asked the yeah. lady at the, at the checkout and she was just like, uh, yeah. She's like, people kind of just went crazy and bought everything. I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, and then I like, and I was starting to see stuff on Instagram, like people cutting their, 
their tissue in, in half with a knife and they're like tough times. And they're like, so I like eventually I was like, okay, maybe I should like look this up. What's going on? And then, yeah, I found out this whole, so this was like before the whole shutdown happened. And, mm. but, um, yeah, I've been, I've been, we're, we're doing great. But so you, you said you were sort of used to it because you tend to work from home anyways. Yes. Yes. So I work on music. I teach lessons uh privately at my little studio at my house and then i also teach at guitar center so it was um about i guess the beginning of or the end of march that's kind of when they were just like they tried to go online lessons but now guitar center's closed and they stayed open for quite a while um after like the shutdown started happening and they were still open but they're shut down so now that we're talking about music let's, let's go into it camellia What's your earliest memory of music? My earliest memory is when I was at church, and that was the first time I saw uh, the drums being played. My cousin was playing the drums, and I just knew. I was like, that's what I want to do. And I was like, I went to my mom and dad. I was like, you know, I want to play drums. They are just like, <laughs> Julian. They are like, well, you know, we uh, you don't really know how to play. And I was just like... At five, I was like, I already knew. I was like, that's what I want to do. And so um, that is my, that's my earliest memory. And from there, I just wanted to, they, I got in, I was, they let me play the, uh, uh, like a conga. And that's how I was able to play at church for a little bit until something happened to it. And, and I wasn't able to play anymore, but I, it was always there. Like I saw it and I was like, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Looks like your son Julian, at one year as a one year old, he's going to have a very early memory of music for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I'm documenting it, you know. So even if he doesn't remember, it, we, we have the videos, which you've seen. <laughs> right. I mean, he, he'll, his memory is definitely going to be based on probably a lot on videos that he's going to see when he's a little bit older. Yeah, totally. Tell me more about that, actually. Um, so you said you're documenting it. How how did you decide to involve your son into into your music world? Um, well, he's he's been involved really since I was since I got I was pregnant. Our pregnancy went from 2018 to 2019. He was born in 2019. So for the nine months, like the first two months, I was a little bit nervous about playing. And I talked to my midwife and and she was just like, you know what? You know, you're OK. Like that's music is part of your life. Drumming is part of your life you know, keep playing. It, it's good for you actually. Cause you know, it's a kind of like a workout. So like while um, you were pregnant. <laughs> so it's, it started while I was pregnant. I played the entire pregnancy. And, um, I remember when he was born seven days old, I took him into my space where, I, where I would like practice. And it was like so cool because I had spent so much time working on music and to have him come like be like, born and then in that space because I worked so much while I was pregnant making videos uh, I even did a show I did shows so how do you think this early access to music or you know music stimulation how is it going to affect him not just through his childhood but his life I think it's going to affect him uh, positively definitely because I mean I even see in like kids coming in, um, who want to take lessons, take drum lessons. And they're, they're young. They're like six, seven, eight, and they can catch on quickly. But it's like, when you start like from like birth, have that exposure, it's just, that's like setting you up to be a prodigy. Really. If you, if you like it enough, you, you can do it. He's going to be miles and miles and miles ahead. If he, if he's interested and he seems like he is interested because he'll wake up in the morning, he'll run out to his little playroom, to his play area, grab the sticks. I don't have to say, I don't have to hand him sticks. He, he has that interest. So incredible. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a few videos and he's definitely got some chops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the first Much things. more than my four-year-old and my <laughs> six-year-old. <laughs> one of the first things I, I showed him about a month old, but I, sh I showed him how to hold the sticks. Because and I, then I moved his I moved his wrists back and forth, 
Cause a lot of kids, they want to move their, their whole arm. And when you kind of get into that, you think, Oh, I'll move my arm. I'll go faster, but it's wrists and fingers. So I, I showed him how to move his wrist and that's, it's, it was cool to see him like develop that little by little as he got older, like, you know, a couple months, he was like, you know, it was after six months, he was like seven, eight, seven, eight months. And he, I was like, Whoa, he's doing the wrist. And I was like, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> the sponge. Okay, so we've heard Camelia playing percussion, and yes, she is amazing. But we haven't heard Julian yet. You know, many times she's carrying Julian in her carrier while she's playing, and Julian picks up the sticks and starts also banging on some things. Well, let's get to hear Master Julian on the percussion. Go right ahead. And here's another bit of him playing. Thanks, Julian. All right, now let's get back to the conversation. So let's rewind back a little bit. Uh, When you were sharing about your childhood, you you, you were immersed in in music at church, and that was just a big impression on you. And it seemed like percussion was there from the very beginning. Did you ever like waver a little bit and you were like, no, maybe I'm interested in guitar or bass or keyboard? whatever other instrument or was it always percussion? It was always, always, always percussion. And that's, that's funny you mentioned that. Cause, um, I just, I'm 30 and I'm like, you know what, maybe I should learn how to play guitar. So like it's been drums from the very beginning mm-hmm. and I've just been very like, you know, direct and like, I need to practice and learn this instrument, master this instrument, which you never really, you know, you're always growing, you're always learning, but it was a goal to just really stick with drums and percussion. It's interesting you say like to, to master this instrument, um, which I mean, the, the curious thing about percussion, it's like, it's more of like this field rather than like one particular uh, instrument. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I've seen you on, you know, play on a tiny little drum pad to a whole drum set to a conga to a cajon. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it seems like you're just playing around with whatever makes noise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. so awesome. Tell me more about that. How do you explore these things? So uh, the story behind that is it's kind of interesting because I was living in Texas, uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, with my husband, and he we moved there for his for his work for for uh, his training as a pilot. I remember we were staying in the studio apartment and so I didn't have room to set up my drums, but we had a, like, we rented a garage. So we had a space. I remember going in and I looked around. I was like, you know what? I can move this stuff around. I was like, you know what? I, I don't have enough room to set up a whole kick drum. Let me set up a cone. Let me set up a, a little stair hi hat. Let me get some electronics for like metronomes, rhythms, make some loops, make some stuff. And that is where that came from. And, uh, I remember taking a video of that, like setup I was using and it went viral. I was just, like, I woke up and I was like, Whoa, <laughs> like people like this. I was like, that's so cool. Cause I, I, I really liked it myself. So it was, it's nice to, um, to have that kind of, uh, appreciation or response to something that's really like cool and awesome to you. And so it was, that was confirmation. And it was also confirmation, uh, that people were enjoying it. Cause when I was practicing in my garage, this woman who was walking, she, cause I had the garage open. She came by and she was like, I thought she was going to ask me to stop. And she was like, wow. She was like, wow, what are you, this is awesome. She's like, do you mind if I just listen? And I was like, sure. She's like, I've had a headache all day and listening to you play is really just helping me relax. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow. So I was like, and then it kind of made me, I was interested. I'm like, okay, a headache and how does music and what I was playing with, like with all this, like a uh, polyrhythmic type stuff, it was very like repetitive. And I was like soloing on top of it, but I started to look into it. Like how does these type of ryth- rhythms um, kind of help the brain? And, and it's, and it's actually a thing. So I've actually, um, one of my goals is to get into like drum therapy specifically, not music therapy oh, beautiful. because yeah, because it's just like, it's just so powerful. 
And so, yeah, it's something I'm going to, I've been looking into and drum therapy is not really a, uh, a thing. It is a thing, but it's not, there's like no certifications, there's no, uh, right. degree. So I'm like, you know what? That means I need to create, <laughs> I need to create that <laughs> because it's not out there. So, and it's Definitely. so, it's so beneficial. It's so helpful to people, to kids. And so it's something I'm very passionate about. I'll have to put you in touch with some friends in Cartagena, Colombia, who do drum therapy and, really? uh, and drum tourism. Wow. Uh, where they take people to like some of the most like Afrocentric areas of Cartagena that still maintain a lot of its African roots. Wow. Uh, and That's get awesome. tourists like connected to, you know, those parts of that part of, of Colombian history. That's amazing. I would love that. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> You mentioned polyrhythms. Can you can we can you elaborate a little bit more? Because like, what does that mean exactly? You know, let's say for for non percussionists, and like, where are the different roots of these rhythms coming from? To answer your question, a polyrhythm is like it's it'll be like an overlap. So you have like a four four, or usually maybe it's like odd time. So you could have like a five eight. So you you'll have five, but then you might put underlay underlay like a nine or seven under it. So it's, it's like this time where, and it usually it's coming from like, I've listened to like, um, big percussion sections, uh, like, uh, whether they're like, you know, African, like djembes and, um, different types of, uh, percussion instruments being played by several different people. And you'll hear this person doing this one thing, but someone else is doing something, someone else is doing something and, and somehow they're over, they're overlapping. But it's not, it's not in like the same time signature. You know what I mean? It's just like, so it's, it's so cool. Do you have some sticks around or something that we, that you can demonstrate a little? Uh, let me see. Let me see. If I can... Okay. So you can do like a, uh, like, so, okay. You have like, um, or maybe start with the basic, like four, four, and then like add layers. So if you had like a, like your kick is doing. Doom, 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 doom. doom. So like your your kick is going boom 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 cut 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 So if that kind of makes any sense, but you see how it's not it's not lined up. You got it the, doesn't feel like it lines up, but it like mathematically makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. So that's like, that's the stuff that I really, really love. And it's kind of like, it's something that I am still exploring because like I hear these things in my head, but I don't always write them out. And um, I remember when I was trying to learn like uh, that kick pattern, which is kind of like from a samba dum, 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 or like a uh like do 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 ka ka do 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 ka do do like a brazilian samba but if you slow mm. that down boom 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 so I, I took that i slowed down like a brazilian samba and then i like applied that stuff that i was thinking about with like big african um drum circles and i like listen to stuff like that i'm like you know what let me try to like blend these two together so i was like if i can get this going which i have in my head like this latin type of feel and then mix this type of like african drum circle type of thing so like say i'm doing like uh doing the whole boom 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 can i get 16 notes over that can i do triplets so it's like how can i how can i get this these patterns to overlap the uh like layers yeah yeah and that's kind of where the inspiration for it has come from just listening to other groups other genres of music and then seeing how i can take from it so i never try to like study anything too much because I, I want to maintain my sound 
I don't want to sound like anyone in particular. So I'm always just trying to pull. I'm like, oh, that's cool. How do they do that? Learn a little bit of it and then put my own style on top of it. And so let's say like learning percussion and learning all these rhythms um, and music in general, did you learn it just like from home and church and uh, just practice? Or did you also get to study it in a like quote unquote academic setting? Yes. So I studied, uh, we could start from, from high school, middle school. I auditioned from middle school for us for arts high school. So I auditioned to get into a CFPA. Center for Fine Performing Arts High School. From there, I started taking drum lessons privately with a army uh, military uh, instructor. And uh, from there, I was doing marching percussion. I was in the marching band. I was in the, the jazz band. I was in like symphonic band. So every single aspect of like different styles of music I was being exposed to. Get ready to graduate from from high school and I was planning to go to, to study music and, and, and college and I didn't get into the schools that I wanted to. So I decided, and my dad was just like, you know what? He's like, you should just go to the military first and then they'll pay for your school. <laughs> and I was like, mm-hmm. all right, well, if I'm going to the military, I want to play in the band. We got prepared for the audition, percussion, um, a mallet solo, like on marimba, uh, mm-hmm. I had to do, uh, play some, different patterns on the drum set, like different styles, jazz. Uh, can you play a bossa nova? Can you play a samba? Um, I had to do a snare drum piece. So they want to make sure you know how to do marching because it's military. You have to know how to do marching stuff. You have to read music. So um, yeah, that is kind of where I got my my training between like high school and then when I joined the military. So it was um, it was a lot, but I learned a lot. And that's kind of where I got a lot of my training for kind of the stuff that I'm doing now, even though I'm out in the military, I'm still working on music. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned the marimba. A lot of people think that percussionists only work with instruments that, you know, per se don't have a tone. Um, But a lot of times like you have to work with, or, or some percussionists work with, with instruments that do have a tone or can produce a melody such as a marimba. I mean, we can even go to the extent of, I guess, a piano being technically a percussion instrument, but it's sort of, it's, it's its own world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one, one of my favorite percussionists, Evelyn, uh, Evelyn Glennie, she, she's awesome at the marimba. That, that tends to be her focus. Mm-hmm. How much do you explore these sort of melodic percussive instruments? Um, recently I've been exploring them more. Like, um, I just bought, I have a steel, steel pan. So, and then I, and I have a, a, a tongue drum, which is like, um, if you've ever seen them, they kind of, they're metal and, uh, you can play them with your hands or with sticks. And, uh, it's, it's kind of used for, um, like therapy and to kind of meditate and all that stuff. So I, I recently wrote, wrote a song called uh, Universal Love, which um, features that instrument, the tongue drum in it. And so, um, yeah, I've been getting a little bit more. Into- and, and it's different from a talking drum? Yes, yes, yes. So okay. the tongue drum is, it almost sounds like a vibraphone, but there's only, um, this one has about six, seven different uh, um, sounds. I can go grab it if you have a... Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> if you have a second, it's close. So it's made by Mino Percussion. And um, I recently I recently have become uh, a Mino Percussion uh, artist. But... Um, So it just has a really, really, really nice, um, just a really, really nice tone. And uh, I don't know, I just, you listen it to it. It has a just, kalimba sort of tone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's, piano. Mm, yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah I have to look it up to see what it looks like. 
Yeah, it looks like a like a metal bowl, but you play on the uh, the top. So the, there's an opening oh, on the it. bottom. <laughs> so so okay. Now that I look at it, these have been. I mean, these have several names, right? Um, mm-hmm. But they're definitely like in. It's a fad of some sort. It seems. Yeah, a lot of people have been getting. There's there's a bigger one that almost looks like a spaceship, and right. um, that one is what is that one called? It's not Which a, has these sort of like convex. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Mm-hmm, like domes sticking yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I have the basically like a smaller version of uh, of the tongue drum, which is the one I just played. Can you play a little bit, actually, a little bit more? Sure, yeah. Julian has a stick now. <laughs> I have another. Yeah. I think Julian wanted to sing there. Yeah, you see how he kind of he's yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a favorite instrument? He really likes he likes this one. He also likes the uh the steel pan. Um kind of like a Jamaican, you know, kind of feel. Yeah, he's been messing around with the talking drum a lot because it's a little bit smaller and he can kind of stand up and play it (laughs) so yeah can you actually if you have one around could you play a little bit i think a lot of people have heard it but they they're not necessarily familiar with what it is oh the talking drum yeah so the talking drum is like nigerian like native to nigeria and uh it's one of my dad's favorites and he all my dad is from nigeria he always used to talk about it when I was a kid. Um, but um, so what's interesting about this instrument is like you squeeze the ropes. And as you squeeze the ropes, it gets higher. So here's without, as you squeeze it, it goes. So they call it the talking drums because like it can like mimic like the in. Like the like you're like you're speaking. Your your voice goes up and down, and you get excited, and it can kind of with this drum you can kind of copy that. So that's why they call it the talking drum. It's kind of kind of cool, and it, it varies. Was it literally in size. used as a form of communication of sorts? Um, this one, no. I have like I know the the djembe was used like because the djembe is like a you know that used to be one that was used to like signal different messages to villages and stuff ah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh the talking drum i just i've seen it used in like like weddings and for parties and stuff like that but mm. i don't know it's possible it could have been who, who we'll knows really? a bit. yeah i'm intrigued <laughs> <laughs> have a Nigerian background how much is that connected to what you do right now in terms of the type of music you explore um yeah I would say it's connected pretty deeply and I remember when I started talking to my dad about like all this you know like asking him questions about different types of uh hand percussion and African drums he was just like he's like it's already there He's like, mm. you know, it's already there. <laughs> like, I didn't really, I didn't really get it until I started exploring it. And I, like, this stuff just kind of comes to me naturally, or I just enjoy it. And it's just, well, whatever it is, it's like, he, he said it, it's already there. And that kind of just gave me the confidence to, to explore because some people, they may be interested, but they're so like, just shut off. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm a drummer. That's it. Like, okay. 
I, I just play drums. Do you play any mm-hmm. percussion? Have you messed with it? Do you like it? Like it, it's just, it's just diving in. And, um, that's kind of when I kind of took like the, uh, the name or the title away, you take the title away, it opens you up to so many more possibilities. Because if you say you're, uh, I'm a drummer. All right. Then you're a drummer. But hey, you know, you want to play some, hey, can you play some congas? You know, you want to play some bongos? It's like, oh, I don't play that. It's like, sure, I'm going to play it. <laughs> I'll get over there. I'll, right. I'll try, you know. <laughs> so let's explore that a little bit. How have you been able to, let's say, distinguish yourself from from other percussionists? And I would love to link that more in terms of like what what you're doing right now, maybe as as a living as a percussionist. <laughs> Um, since there are a variety of ways, what, what is like the niche that you have found? Uh, being able to kind of combine that sound, uh, that percussion sound that like a lot of drummers, they don't do a lot of percussionists don't play drum set. And I even, I, I recognize that when, even when I was in the military, because like you were saying, like, it's just so big and, um, I, my ear was just kind of going to that. Like, I remember, I remember like, man, the sound of just the drum set is, I was like, I need, I was like craving uh, a new sound. And when I, it was just kind of worked out when I was in Texas and I had that opportunity to like kind of start exploring different stuff. It really just, I was like, this is, this is where, this is where I'm at. This is where I need to be because this, this is my sound. <laughs> so it's it was kind of cool. I don't know if that answers your question. Did I did I get all the points? Yeah, I mean definitely. So, but let, let's dig in a little bit more. Um, like who's who's hiring you? Because I know that you're sponsored as well. So how does that tie into being a percussionist? Uh, so my unique style um, kind of has has allowed me to go on a, a world tour. So uh, this time last year, uh, I had just had Julian and about two months, he was two months old and I got a, I got an email saying, you know, uh, would you be interested in going on a world tour? Um, they had been talking to me prior and, and, but they knew this, like I was pregnant and, and all that stuff. And, uh, but um, they saw my video on Instagram that's how they found me. And I was playing, I was on the beach. I was that playing. first video that you, that you mentioned. <laughs> yeah. I was playing a cajon. I was uh, playing like a very like splash hi hats and very small setup. And that's, that's what they saw. And they were just like, that's who we want. And so they, uh, they got in touch with me and they, um, that, that landed me a, uh, a world tour. We went to Israel, we went to Morocco, we went to Spain, uh, went to but this Canada. was a world tour with a particular band? This was a, a artist. Her name is Boyka. She's a Latin Grammy and Grammy nominated, uh, singer from, she's from Spain, Mallorca, Spain. Uh, family is originally from, uh, Equatorial Guinea. So, um, yeah, it was really cool to, uh, like to have that opportunity to, to travel and kind of be more in like, just not like a drum set sound. You need like more of a percussion sound because yeah, you're like the, you're the only one, you're not gonna have 15, 20 people. So you have to understand how to like lay into that role. Mm -hmm. So, and so it has it been mainly uh, live performances and, and touring or also maybe like recording for other artists who are looking for, you know, different sounds that is not a drum set. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people reach out to me to do, you know, drum set recordings, but a lot of people are like, they're interested in that, that unique sound. Mm-hmm. And I'll even ask them like, Hey, do you want this? And they're like, Oh no, no, no. I want like, I want that like percussion uh, it was like a percussion setup, really, you know, like the sound of a kick drum and the sound of a cajon, like it's a different, it's a different sound and it changes your sound. So, um, yeah, I do, I do a lot on social media really. And I use social media as a way to, 
get my stuff out there to help me land the next gig or performance. So yeah, I focus a lot of my attention because I mean, I'm a full-time mom and Mm -hmm. um, it's just like kind of, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to be on tour? Do I want to uh, teach more? So me personally, I want to tour um, the U S I want to take Julian with me. Um, I want to, uh, keep teaching online and in person, but, um, yeah, having music as my, my full time is, is always the, uh, the goal. I think that's really interesting that you were, you're looking at your priorities, you know, being a mom. And so how can you work with that? And I think if we can elaborate a little more on that, because I think it's easy as musicians to like, just talk about like the grind and you, know, you have to tour and mm-hmm. work 24 seven. But the reality is a lot of musicians like yourself, I mean, have families or moms or dads or, Life is complex. So how are you like balancing all of these things? Um, I, I make a, a list. So I have a list of goals and I have um, vision boards. And so on my daily, you know, I wake up, I take care of Julian during his nap. I'll go, you know, if I got an hour or two, I'll go work on some stuff, you know, Maybe I can work on stuff, you know, while he's um, kind of bouncing around in, in the carrier and I'm holding him. But it's it's um, it's like instead of, you know, oh, it's eight, nine o'clock. I'm going to go watch a movie. It's like, you know, what, I'm going to go work on my craft. I'm going to go because I, I just know what this is going to do, you know, and I and I really feel like it needs to be out there, especially with me writing stuff now and uh, writing music. It's just like wow, you know, this, this needs to be shared with the world. So that's kind of my, um, my thought process and my drive to kind of just, uh, just get it out there. So I'm just like, every moment I have, I'm like, oh, let me go work on this. Or let me go edit this video or let me go, uh, you know, practice this lick or, okay, someone needs me to do a video or someone wants to do a collaboration or, you know, it's just, it's con it's constant working on, progression and that forward movement when you're with a percussion instrument what inspires you or motivates you in that moment in the moment um just creating just 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 i'm just happy to be able to to sit and create i just and then the places that i go while i'm playing especially when i'm like like working on something or I've mastered something that I was working on. And you really have that, that freedom to just really like release your mind and just start like going further into the rhythms, you know? So it's, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Do you ever feel like you hit a valley in terms of creativity and I don't know, just something about flow, like, is not working. No, no, I, oh, if, <laughs> a glimpse into my brain. It's just like, Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, <laughs> it's just, it's just, wow. So the possibilities are endless and the ideas are the flow is just, it's like a river, like a river just flowing. It's just like, Whoa. Mm-hmm. And I, and I just, and that's why I have to take notes because, um, and I have to write my stuff down And I'm I'm writing like a song will come to my head or a melody will come to my head and then lyrics will come to my head or a rhythm. And I'm like, next thing I know, I'm like snapping my fingers and clapping and I'm trying to. So I just I just have to stay. I write things down to keep me like on track and then I can be like, you know, by writing things down. What do you mean? Like like musical annotation, lyrics, lyrics, uh, melodies and goals. So if I'm like, you know what, today I need to, um, I need to edit some videos. I need to, uh, 
create this uh, loop or create this rhythm or, all right, oh yeah, that's right. I had this song idea that I was, so music, writing down music, writing down lyrics, writing down rhythms, like all of it, just constantly taking notes because the inspiration and the flow of uh, creativity is just, it's just amazing. So. Mm. Well, you are blessed. (laughs) (laughs) Even though it seems like you have a constant flow of creativity and ideas and inspiration, do you have a support system to to help you? I mean, especially while your husband's away, I'm sure that can make things very challenging. How how do you deal with that? I just stay in the I stay saying thank you. Like when I'm focusing on just being grateful and thankful for the things that I want or I have. It just, it completely changes Mm. my mind. So I'm not focusing on, uh, you know, you know, my husband is, he's over in Bahrain and, you know, and this whole virus. And cause then that makes you sad and then you draw more sad and then Mm. now you can't focus and you're like, Oh, you know, there's just so much going on. I can't focus. Like me, it's just like, all right, I have this goal. This goal makes me very excited. I am really excited about this song I'm writing, or I'm really excited about this rhythm, or I had this video and I'm really excited about that. So now your attention is on that and you're not focusing on, you're staying focused on what you want. And uh, that's really what I've been practicing this year. Not complaining, just being thankful and grateful for everything. And it just really kind of just, completely changes my mindset musically and just in general like so yeah that's so beautiful thanks camelia what do you think is the purpose of music uh the purpose of music is to help people you know that's what i think um like i think about what music has done for me um just growing up it's you know it excites you it helps you dance. Um, it's in movies. Like it's just, it's literally everywhere. Like your heart is a, is a drum. Essentially it's, it's a beat. It's a heartbeat. So it's everywhere. Universal music is the universal language. I had that thought, like they used to say that all the time when I was in the military, music is a universal language. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah. Because everyone speaks a different language and then music is like you can read any every, a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note. It's the same everywhere in the world. I thought that's what it meant, but it's it, it's so much more than that. It's mm-hmm. it's your blood. It's the flow of energy. These are tones. <laughs> it's like whoa. Let's get super hippie. <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing. I feel like now more than ever different languages are also entering like the at least the pop in industry pop music industry around the world where you'll have uh songs that are in spanish you know hitting the charts all over the place mm-hmm. um or or in a different language and and it just reaches different corners of the world do you have any insights on this and also maybe any particular trends in in terms of uh, rhythms that you're noticing are coming up that maybe people weren't aware of before, anything along those lines? Yeah, I would say Afrobeat is... Afrobeat is getting really big, you know? It's huge. Yeah, Yeah, and uh, I actually did a video on it, like where I'm kind of talking about one of the songs and it's like that three, two clave it's in every single Afrobeat. It's like signature. Can you describe it? Uh, so I want to like or demonstrate, tech- I should say one of techno's, uh, songs. Catch, 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 
You know, you read ba 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 chika chika tum chika pom ba ba ka chika chika chakum chik. You know that three two that over two three cha 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 cha. Yeah, but so so there's the three two clave, which I thought was really interesting because three two clave is also used in Latin music, but right. three two or two three. Like in salsa. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, all right, why do they Afrobeat is strictly three two? Why is it not? Why don't they go to two three at all? So I, I, I have questions, but I'm, I'm guessing it's just you know, who knows? I'll have to go and explore, explore those questions and you know keep. But I kind of just I, I listen to it and I'm just like, hey, you know what? I bet people people don't even know they like it, but they don't even know like the rhythms that are going on. That's like just making it awesome. I think Afrobeat's gonna get even bigger. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. I think this is just the start. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. What do you think started all of this, and how are people like learning about Afrobeat, or maybe they don't even know that it's called Afrobeat, but they know the rhythm that they hear. They're like, "Oh yeah, I, I want to dance to that." <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I don't. I really don't. I got into it. I got into Afrobeat probably like 2014, 2015. My sister sent me something. She was like, "Hey, you got to check this out," and I'm like, "All right," and I was like oh wow yeah this is cool and it, it like just stuck in my head and when something sticks in my head next thing i know i'm on the drum set and it starts coming out in my playing and i'm like man and i'm like thinking like i came up with this but it's something that i heard and uh that's kind of what's cool about different types of music and not maybe necessarily knowing what it is but hearing it mm -hmm. just hearing it and that inspiration from it will kind of start popping up the next thing you know you're playing something that you you didn't think you had in your bag of tricks Camelia, what's something that you're looking forward to and or what's something that's on the horizon i am i'm looking forward to to touring <laughs> It's not on, I mean, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. You know, I'm, I'm sending out those positive, positive vibes and mindset, like speaking it into existence, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to touring and, and uh, writing music and uh, exploring other musical avenues outside of drums and percussion, like guitar and I'm learning guitar and just really immersing myself completely and and music in all aspects you know uh, i like hey i get some auto tune i'll auto tune i'll sing I'll sing a little bit so on my yeah. on my song universal universal love mm -hmm. i am i am using auto tune to kind of pitch correct my uh singing <laughs> but it's just like the inspiration is there it's just like and i just when i have the desire to go i i just have to go because I'm like, I, these thoughts are coming in and I'm like, I'm not going to be the one that's going to stop the, the forward movement or the artistic uh, thoughts and possibilities. I'm just, okay, I have the idea to do this. I can do it. All right, let's make it happen. Oh, I need to go buy something. All right, let's go do that. What do I need? So mm -hmm. I'm just... Camelia, where can people contact you or see more of your work? Uh, my website www.akhamie.com that's akami.com um, I'm also on Instagram akami.music so my Instagram I'm on Facebook akami music I'm on Twitter akami music there um, yeah Facebook, Instagram I got my website uh, Twitter looking into getting a TikTok because that's kind of blowing up um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think with your type of it, type of videos, TikTok would, is the perfect platform. Yeah, very like just short, quick, you know. But I mean, just just exploring TikTok, it's been like, man, really, really cool. People's people's ideas they have have been really, really cool. So. Well, I think Julian, it's like half an hour past your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll yeah. let you guys go. I thought maybe uh, talking would like lull him to sleep, but yeah, it looks he's, like that didn't work. 
Yeah, he's getting, I know he's tired, but now he's like, I, I think he gets sense. He's like, I want to be in a bed and I'm still in this carrier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm taking All right, Camille, it was a pleasure talking to you, you and to too. Julian. I look forward to hearing more from him as well later on. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, Camille. Take care. Thanks, you too. Bye. As always, thanks for listening to this podcast. I really appreciate your support. Just you listening gives me a sense of purpose in putting out this material, material that is inspiring, that is moving, that motivates us as musicians and music professionals or even just music listeners. If you like this episode, please consider giving it a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. And if you really want to support the show and uh, give me that extra little boost, uh, you can go on oneplanetmusic.com and click on donate and it'll take you to uh, my Patreon page where you can just, you know, pay a few bucks every time I put out an episode or, uh, or per month. And even if it's a small amount, it's a symbolic way of, of you saying, hey, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. So I'm sending you much love, a big hug. But don't don't worry, like before I hug you, I'll like wash my hands for 30 seconds and and all that. So no need to worry. Have a great week. Bye.